What's up Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Gravity Falls video. I am so excited to get into this one. Today we're doing another one of those analysis style videos. Once again, you guys seem to absolutely love these. This is the aspect of my reactions on YouTube that I think is quite original actually in that aspect, is that I'm actually trying to solve the lore and I'm looking deeper in each episode and I'm trying to piece together the story bit by bit. And I've seen a lot of comments actually that say that I've been picking up on things that you didn't pick up on for a long time or you, you haven't even seen before. So that's really good to know. That's, it's really good that my FNAF theorist brain is coming in handy here. Um, but we got stuck. We got a little bit stuck in the last reaction video. So we got up to a point where we have watched eight episodes of Gravity Falls. And obviously there's a clue, there's a code, sorry, at the end of every episode. Yet in my last reaction video, I had no idea what the last three codes were. We managed to solve one, but I don't know what it means. Uh, and the other two, they just don't work. So this is the Excel that I, that I had last time. This is my Google Sheets document. It is my Gravity Falls decoder. And basically this is my decoder for the three letters back stuff. Um, so for example, we know that a D is an A. So if you put a D in there, it becomes an A um, and then etc. etc. So this is a really, really quick method of decoding all of the all of the codes that I find at the end of each episode. If we go down here, we got another sheet and here I have compiled everything. So we've got the episode number, the episode name, the code that we get at the end of the episode, and then the decoded uh, version of that code, right? So we got all of these first five, right? Completely fine, and we know what they mean now. I've gone through all of that with you. So we have Welcome to Gravity Falls, Next Week Return to Butt Island, He's Still in the Vents, Carla, Why, why Won't You Call Me, and Onwards Aoshima, or Aoshima, whatever. So there we go. Those are completely fine. We don't really need to go back to those. They're not even that, um, they're not like law centric, but they're still pretty cool either way. Then we get to episode six and we had this really, really long code and it says, Mr. Mr. Caesarian will be out next week. Mr. Atbash will sub substitute. And I have no idea what that means. I have absolutely no idea. Is it like a, a doctor? Uh, like, uh, maybe it's going to be in the actual episode itself, but as I said in that episode, I feel like I had a pretty good grasp of what what was going on in that episode, so I, I can't really have missed that. So we're going to do some research today, I think, into that. And then, as I said, the, the, these last two, when you take them three letters back, as we've been doing with all of the other codes, it doesn't work. They're, it doesn't give you words. Um, so I'm a bit confused. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit stuck. The first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go all the way back to, or not all the way back, but I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro and I'm going to go back to episode number seven, which is when the clues, the, the codes I couldn't figure out. That That's the first episode where I couldn't figure out the code. So what I want to do here is I actually want to get to a point uh, where I can listen to the whisper at the beginning because that whisper tells you to do three letters back. I wonder if it's still there or if it, uh, it has changed at all. Okay, so there's definitely still a whisper there. I just heard it as I did it uh, just then. I'm gonna reverse the speed and I'm gonna set it to 90. And we're gonna listen to it and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's gonna be something new. It is. It's something new. It's different. Oh, okay, okay. I just don't know what it's saying. <laughs> Let me turn the volume up a little bit and then I'm gonna try to hear. I, I can't get it. I, I don't know what it is. Um, oh. I can't figure that out. I don't know what it's saying. Um, okay, I'm gonna do something really weird and this is gonna sound awful, but I'm going to put it to 50% and 
and I'm going to see if I can get any syllables out of this. It, the quality is just too bad there. I think I, I think I have to turn it down too much actually. Uh, does turning it up help? I assume not. Ah, oh, it's there. You can kind of hear you you can hear someone speaking. And it's not three letters back. That's the that's the key thing here. Is that it's it's something completely different. Uh. So okay, we're gonna just leave that for now. I've been trying to do it for like. 10 minutes and it's I'm not getting anything from it I, I, whether no matter how much I speed it up or slow it down I'm not getting anything from it but I know that there is something new there definitely and I don't know how to get to that and we're gonna keep that in the back of our mind because I have a feeling that that is going to be key to solving these new clues these new codes I keep saying clues I, I do mean codes Let's go back to episode 6. So we have Mr. Caesarian will be out next week. Mr. Atbash will substitute. I don't know what that is. I know a Caesarian is like a C-section. So... <laughs> or is it Caesar? Caesarian. Like Caesar, Julius Caesar. Maybe we'll have to do some research. So I'm going to research Mr. Caesarian. Caesarian and Atbash codes. Gravity Falls. Okay, I don't want to, I don't want to know, no, I don't want to know, I don't want spoilers, so I'm not going to, but how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this if it's just going to show me spoilers? Um, Atbash, the Atbash Cypher, the Atbash Cypher is a very common and simple cypher that simply enco encodes a message with the reverse of the alphabet. Initially, it was used with Hebrew. Wait! This is our cipher! A Caesar cipher. In cryptography, a Caesar cipher, known as a Caesar cipher, or is it Caesar? I don't know. I'm assuming it's Caesar. The shift cipher, Caesar's code, or Caesar shift, is one of the simplest and most widely known encryption techniques. That's why I was able to get it, because it's very simple. Whereas at Bash, I have never heard of before and I've never seen that in use either. I've never had to solve anything with this. Okay, so here's the cool part. You're gonna get to see me solve this today, okay? So technically we now know what this means. Um, so it's just saying Mr. Caesarian next week, as in next episode, Mr. Caesarian ain't gonna work for you. We're gonna have Mr. Atbash. We're going to change the cipher up. So, I'm actually going to change this up here to say Caesar Cypher and then we're going to have Atbash Cypher up here and then we're going to change all of these letters right this is the cool part I can just do this really quickly okay I think I've done it uh, I had to manually type it because I didn't I couldn't figure out how to do it in Google Sheets I know how to do it in Excel but I don't know how to do it in Google Sheets um, so this should work now. So we have A to Z, B to Y, C to X, etc. Um, basically, what's happening is we're just flipping the alphabet and then putting it, putting it on top of each other. So you'll see in the middle of, of alphabet, M is going to be N and N is going to be M, and there's your symmetry of this uh, of this cipher. So that's very cool. Let's see then what this says. So episode number seven said. And then <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put these letters in and that is not a good start. H S F. Oh no. It doesn't work. Are you kidding me? Um, why isn't this working? A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Never mind, it does work. Um, guys, I'm so dumb. I'm so ridiculously dumb. These aren't the codes in the episodes. These are... Oh my gosh, okay. Let's start again. Let's pretend that never happened. Uh, 
So it's not these, it is those. Okay, so hopefully now this works, okay? I'm gonna get rid of that. And then we're going to K, Z, K, V, I. Oh my gosh. Guys, we have a word. You don't know how long that took me. You have no idea how long that took me. Um, <laughs> Q, Z, N, R, uh, W, R. Uh, this is going to be Dipper. Yep. Dipper. And then H, Z, B, H. Okay. Paper Jam Dipper says. That makes sense. And then Z, F, F, T, <laughs> S, D. This is so dumb. Paper Jam Dipper says, Oh, great. Fantastic. Okay, so there is our episode seven uh, code complete. Paper Jam Dipper says, oh, uh, So it's not a Caesar cipher, it is an Atbash cipher. And what I imagine is these codes are only going to get harder and harder. And as time goes on, as episodes go on, we're going to have even more ciphers along here. And that's going to be crazy because we're going to have to go through each one and try and figure out which one it is. Maybe not, but we'll see. Uh, let's see if Irrational Treasures uh, episode is also the same thing. I assume it is because why wouldn't it be? Um, so here we have V and then K O F I R Y F H G I V N Y O V B E Pluribus Tremly. Um, that is the president's name, the eighth and a half president or something like that. The, uh, the president that we meet, uh, who is, uh, who's crazy. So great. Uh, it, it is great that we have solved that now. I'm so pleased. Like that was actually so rewarding. Um, it took so long to solve, but it was very reward rewarding. I now learned a little bit about different ciphers. Uh, so that's very cool as well. I'm sure you guys were screaming at your screens when you saw that uh, that last reaction video and I just didn't know how to solve any of this. But now I have it. I have it, y'all. Uh, just You just have to give me time uh, and I will please you. <laughs> cool. So that's looking great. Um, actually, now that we know the at back, what the ash back at... Blah, 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 now that we know what the Atbash cipher does, I want to go back to Premiere and I want to see if I can figure this out again. I, do, I don't I don't get it. Ooh, I heard switch. Switch uh, switch A and Z. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's switch A and Z. It has to be. Because, I mean, that, that is what you do with the at bash cipher. You switch A and Z. So that, that does make sense. I just don't get how you're supposed to hear that, r reverse it, and and hear switch A and Z. Like, that, that's a bit of a stretch to me, but whatever. It's fine. We got it. Okay, there's still a few things I really want to go through in this video. Um, and that's because in the last episode that we watched, episode 8, Irrational Treasure, there were a few things in that episode that I was like, I need to go back and analyze that. Um, and it was namely stuff like the alchemical symbols um, and, and stuff like that. I find it really cool that um, as we are kind of solving aspects of this, we're seeing it actually come into fruition uh, during the series because like, okay, Alex Hirsch, who is the creator of the show, amazing guy, by the way. Uh, I have like seen like one or two interviews with him. Um, amazing guy. He, he could have easily put that like first frame in the intro that we've analyzed so many times at this point. He could have just put that there and then not gone back to it at all. It could have just been like a clue for later on in the show, etc. No, he put that in there. But as time has gone on, we are getting things explained to us about that. It was almost foreshadowing, right? And we haven't even seen Bill Cipher yet. If, if I hadn't known 
who Bill Cipher was, like, that it, that would have been explained right at the very end of the series. I assume we're going to be meeting B Bill Cipher in some way. So, like, crazy. That it's it's really cool that we are going back to that and we are slowly solving it through time because we are watching the episodes. Anyway, I'm going to quit talking. I want to come down here. So, first of all, actually, let's look at the the, the intro because. I've seen this so many times, and I'm always like, hmm, maybe there's more here. So this is the intro, obviously. Oh, okay. So we have more of, like, the book here. Uh... Gosh, okay. Where do I even begin? So, at the top here, right at the top, um, we seem to have more sort of code and I recognize that as, as one of those codes where you only need like, you know how um, modern times, like they they made like every number, or, or all, all 10 numbers from zero to nine, they made it with an eight, is it eight? One, two, three, four, five. It's a seven digit display um, where you have like seven lines and then you can make any number with it, any number that you want. That's similar to this, I think, where you kind of have like a box and then you can do whatever you want with the box, but each, but some things that you do with the box make symbols and those symbols can be decoded into letters. And so I wonder if that's gonna be something like that. Um, this is a really cool like wave thing in the middle. Don't know what it means. It looks like a fidget spinner. <laughs> uh, and then, on the, uh, under his, under Dipper's hand here, I think we have like a similar like horoscope thing. Um, seems like there's a lot of like cir circular imagery stuff here. Bill Cipher on the top left looks like maybe like some sort of hieroglyphics or Greek on the bottom left, but I don't think we can solve that in any way. Um, so what's down here? More alchemical symbols. Um, we've, we already know what that Z is down at the bottom, down here. Um, that's, that's zinc. Uh, I don't know what any of the others are. That looks like a form of sulfur, maybe. To be honest, I think we've done enough alchemy, uh, like looking up alchemy lore and stuff like that. So I'm not going to look that up right now. Uh, but if it's important, then let me know in the comments below. Um, Top right, we've also got a triangle with the number three in it. Obviously, triangles are very well known for having three sides, three angles. That's why it's called a triangle. Um, and triangles are also very well known for uh, representing Bill Cipher in this universe, apparently. So, um, or at least I assume so, right? You, you, we have a lot of triangular imagery and the only thing that I know is triangular in this series that is probably going to be very important later on is Bill Cipher. Uh, other thing about the number three is three letters back. Is it, is that, am I weird in saying that? It's almost quite weird that the first le the first cipher was three letters back, three as in triangle, triangle as in Bill Cipher. And then when we got to the Double Dipper episode, which is almost an episode where, um, Dipper is seeing a reflection of himself. It's almost like we're reflecting the letters onto an image of itself. Um, so that's that's an interesting theory, I guess. That's a that's a hypothesis, not really a theory. It doesn't. It's not that well supported. But it maybe it could keep going like that. Maybe it's maybe these ciphers are actually metaphorical. And also the thing that I haven't pointed out yet, and I don't know how I haven't pointed this out yet, is the fact that Bill Cipher's name is Bill Cipher. Is Bill Cipher the one giving us these codes? Is he the one? Um, is he the one talking right at the beginning? Uh, as in, like the whispers? Uh, is he the whispers? Um, so that's also interesting to think about. So here, I think we're going to get another shot of the book. Um, okay, so this says, in my investigations, I recently made a discovery. Nathaniel Northwest was not the fraud. Uh, was not the founder of Gravity Falls and his uh, fa family legacy is a fraud. I believe the proof is uh, in this leaflet or whatever. That's what Dipper reads out. Um, so it's really cool that it's, it is actually there. I don't know if I can really um, decode <laughs> everything on the left, but 
that's cool that we that we see what he's actually reading as well. Um, so then this is where we we take that and then he pulls it off. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so then here, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We're kind of picking up these books and stuff, and then we're comparing all of these symbols here to symbols up here. So, first of all, big thing, lots of triangles. Lots of triangles everywhere. It is, um, it's it's cool that he brings up hieroglyphics first, actually, because as, as I've pointed out before, Bill Cypher has that sort of like pyramid kind of um, look to him. And we know that he's also like a golden color. And we've seen, um, we've seen Sol, which is sun, which, uh, and the alchemical, uh, again, alchemy, uh, the alchemical element for that would be gold. Um, so it's almost like all of this is connected and it's like Egyptian, but it's not quite Egyptian because we, we don't have any hieroglyphics in here. We have a lot of alchemical symbols and stuff like that. So it's almost like it's pulling from uh, ancient Egypt, but it's also not. Um, and again, we have alchemy. We have the symbol for earth, I think that is. Um, and yeah, more alchemy, a lot of waves and stuff. Okay, I don't think there's anything else there. But yeah, he pulls up hieroglyphics. And then the, I think the next thing that he pulls up by the way, could this be um, could this be a code? If we looked up hieroglyphics, could that spell something? I'm actually going to look that up. Okay. So here we have a hieroglyphic alphabet. Oh, okay. This looks. Oh god, this is going to be complicated. Um, let me get this up and then put it down here. Uh, where's my face cam? I think it's in an okay place. So let's get my player up here. So what we have is just a load of random symbols and I'm wondering if we can turn this into letters in any way. So we have a bird and I think, oh, that's even that's quite difficult. Um, do I have my pen and paper. I must have lost it, but I, I think that's probably A rather than U or W or M. I think M is an owl. U looks more like a, I don't know, like, it's like a very long legged, but A is more like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. And then we've got like a curl. I don't think this is actual hieroglyphics. I don't think there's a code here, but I am seeing a lot of similar things. Like I'm seeing some eyes, even though actually there isn't an eye hieroglyphic, or maybe this is just a bad, bad uh, image, but you would expect an eye to be in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Uh, Cause you see eye imagery everywhere, which is also maybe something that I could also point out with Bill Cipher. He has, he's mono eyed. Um, he's a cyclops basically. Uh, so it, it, it's strange because I again that there's a lot of that sort of imagery with ancient Egypt a lot of just like eye eye, eye symbols um, so hmm don't think there's anything there um, uh, that's all I'm gonna say I, I don't think there's anything there there could be again let me know in the comments below if I have missed something there uh, because obviously I don't I don't want to miss things. Uh, please don't let me know how to solve things though. Just be very careful with what you comment. So now we have numerology. Uh, and so this is at a point where I have absolutely no idea what numerology is actually. So I'm going to do some research into this, but I do know what these symbols mean. Um, this is, uh, this is absolutely uh, astrology. Um, I'm just looking for cancer and I, I can't see I can't see the cancer symbol. So this top one up here, I'm gonna see if I can name them all. This is uh, Sagittarius. And I know that because I'm a Sagittarius. What can I say? Let me know in the comments what that means. What, what does Sagittarius mean for me? Is that good? Probably not. This curvy M, Scorpio? Is that Scorpio? I'm not sure. This one's Libra. Um, 
That's a weird M that I have actually never seen before. This is... Don't know. Don't know what that is. Is that Taurus? No, that's Taurus, I think. Um, Gemini. Where's Gemini? Is that Gemini? Wait. But I thought... Maybe that's Gemini. Oh, I don't freaking know. Okay, let's let's just look it up. Huh. How weird. Numerology doesn't seem to have anything to do with astrology. How numerology works. Uh, in the world of Harry Potter, Hermione's Granger's favorite subject is arithmancy. Uh, freaking nerd, am I right? Oh my god, guys! I want to take I want to take a, a test. I want to know what Sagittarius means now. I'm single. Please, please marry me. Uh, someone in the comments. Uh, what is your goal? Find my perfect partner. I'm. I want to. Okay, whatever. My level of knowledge about astrology. I am curious about it. Uh, my date of birth, for anyone who wants to know, is the 10th of December. I'm not going to tell you the, the, the year though. Actually, no, I am. It's 2001. Okay, based on your answers, this took way too long, by the way. Astro astrological blueprint and guidance plan. Come on, give it to me. Help me find my perfect partner, please. Just please, come on. Just do it. Oh my god, just get, get to the point. Nobody wants to watch this. Let's get started. I just finished. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, bro. These days, man, star sign, people get horoscopes and they pay so much money to understand who they're going to marry uh, and it's all baloney. I don't believe in astrology. I really don't. Oh, Pythagorean theorem. Um, Greek philosopher Pythagoras founded numerology. I didn't know that. Um, mathematical proportions and musical harmonies, stringed instruments, first irrational number, square root of two. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, what even is numerology? Oh, here we go. Uh, many numerology systems also use a person's date of birth to arrive at another number known as the birth, life or destiny number. Let's say John's birthday is July 31st, 1981. In numerology, that is 7 plus 31 plus 1981 equals 2019. Further add 219 is 12 and one and two is a birthday number of three. Okay, so my birthday number, my birthday number is gonna be 10 plus 12. Wait, I did that wrong. No, I didn't. 10 plus 12 is 22 plus 20, uh, 2001 is 2023. So my, my number is two plus two plus three is seven. Lucky number, I will say lucky number. Uh, seven G P Y. What um, number of the beast? Six six six. Who who cares? Okay, so is numerology just um, literally just like trying to interpret numbers and stuff? Hmm. Numerology is a type of applied mysticism. It correlates a mystical symbol with a person's life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see the connection now. So numerology. It's almost like astrology, but whereas astrology uses kind of stars and constellations, asterisms to understand uh, something about oneself, numerology is more about the number side of things and like my birthday and what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I, I'm just really hungry right now. And so I, I sort of understand, um, I sort of understand where this kind of diagram is coming from with this sort of numerology horoscope um, uh, zodiac kind of wheel. Uh, just to check, yes, there are 12, 12 signs there, but I don't see cancer here. That's the thing. Um, what I do see here, funnily enough, is this like little wave thing up here in the top left. And that's definitely Egyptian. So I don't know what's going on here. Unless maybe, um, maybe, because this is Disney, they didn't want to include cancer. Does that make any sense? I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I feel like there's been worse themes than than cancer here, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then the final thing he goes on to is this. Okay, so alchemist symbols. 
So, smoke. Oh, sorry. We have a box with up and right smoke steam. Okay. And then this top one. Okay, I'm going to look this up actually. Extraction of dryness. Oh! Oh, I don't want to see that. That's gross. That's gross. Oh my gosh. I don't want to know about that. Oh, teeth stuff. I'm not going to be able to show that, I don't think. But look it up for yourself if you want to be horrified. Um, extracting a dryness, alchemist, alchemy. I'm actually not seeing anything about this other than gravity full stuff. Gravity full specific stuff. So I think maybe that symbol is made up. But either way, they've said alchemist symbols, extraction of dryness. Um, I can't read that. Abstra... Abs Does it zoom in? Oh, it zooms in a little bit, but not on the right place, almost. Um, okay. So we have an, a big A. We have fire of circulation three or something. Fire of reverberation. Fire of reaction something great fire fusion fixation okay very confused on all of this yeah that looks like fire of circulation three that's weird i don't know i'm i'm very, I'm very confused by this whole alchemy thing especially when there seems to be a lot of made up symbols or whatever but either way what it's pointing to us is that fire a fire a triangle is fire so maybe um maybe bill cipher represents a fire, a uh, flame of, I don't know, it feels like it's going back to that Egyptian kind of mythology and um, and kind of, uh, you know, the ancient Egyptian, what they used to do and the, their culture and, and language and stuff. Um, Okay, let it be here. Let it here be recorded. Nathaniel Northwest, famous in his native Gravity Falls for standing in the park and hitting himself with a large boating oar until he blacked out, was chosen to become the pasty mayor of Gravity Falls. Northwest spoke in a series of grunts and screams and often yelled in his trademark phrase, "I am going to eat this entire oak tree because I am a powerful wizard." The fabled founder of Gravity Falls was, in fact, a fraud. His last moment on Earth was spent choking on a giant piece of bark attempting to live out his beautiful dream he was hated by everyone that knew him he will not be missed other hidden his historical truths include thomas jefferson was actually just two kids in an overcoat standing on each other's shoulders the current and forever president of the united states is actually santa claus under the reign of mrs claus america is not a democracy but a jollyocracy uh <laughs> The statues in Mount Rushmore are actually gigantic, presidential-faced robots that will be called into action when America needs them the most. An enormous, evil, time-devouring baby from another dimension is frozen in an Antarctic glacier. Fortunately, glaciers never melt, so we should be fine. Writing jokes for cartoons is more important than sleep. If you recite the Pledge of Allegiance backwards, you'll gain secret wizard powers. This works, kids. Try it at home. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. I love it when they put little details in like that um, because it means they really actually care about the show and all the, like the little details in it. It's, it's really cool to see. Um, and I think that is actually everything in this episode. Uh, one thing I did actually notice while editing, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of the time I do notice these sorts of things while I'm editing the video and, and I, I wish I could record myself editing the video because the look on my face when I realize something is, is really, really cool actually. Um, something I did notice is in this episode they talk a lot about um, woodpeckers and the fact that woodpeckers, um, it, it was legal in Gravity Falls to have a marriage with, um, with a woodpecker. To be married to a woodpecker, I said that, said that very weirdly. But if we go to Dipper versus Manliness, I think one of the first, actually no, it's it's after the intro. One of the first, here we go. One of the first things that we see is a woodpecker drilling into the diner. It's really funny because, and the reason I say that's funny is because it's really strange, right? That we see things earlier on in the series that we don't understand yet. Um, and, and obviously like, 
it's just a woodpecker, who cares? But like, it's really cool that you can watch two episodes and then go back to the episode that you watched two episodes ago and see that and think that that connection and, and, and think, oh my gosh, a woodpecker. Like we just learned about woodpeckers and the history of woodpeckers and Gravity Falls. So it's really cool that you can go back through the series and st see things that you didn't see before just because you have new founded context later on. Even like the beavers and stuff, like obviously um, we didn't learn anything new about the beavers, but they are there and... Uh, oh! I didn't see that before. Uh, first of all, this is called Greasy's Diner. I didn't know that. I just know this from all the game theory videos <laughs> where they have Fredbear's family diner uh, and they use this image. Um, no, it says Gravity Falls 1883. Is that when Gravity Falls was first founded? Uh, potentially. Or it could have been when this diner was first founded, but I feel like that's quite a um, quite a long shot. Um, wow. That's quite a lot for one video, so I'm going to end it here, unfortunately. Um, I think that we've gone through quite a lot here today, actually, and I think it's really good that I've now got the, the uh, codes. I, I now understand the codes, I've deciphered them, and I think that's really, really fun that it's, it, that it's changing the ciphers every once in a few episodes. Hopefully it won't change again too soon. Uh, I want to see if we can figure out those codes in the next reaction, which should be coming very soon. Uh, I am planning to record that, um, I think tomorrow maybe. So let's, uh, let's get excited for that, I guess. <laughs> And once again, you can become a member today so you can see my full uncut reactions for just $1 a month. Really cheap, genuinely. Uh, literally just spend a dollar and you get all of these episodes for free, completely uncut. For free? I just said for free. It's basically free. Um, but there you go. It, it, they, they also, I think people have been telling me that they uh, are just a lot cooler to watch because you get to see the whole context and you get to see my reaction to everything as you will. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm so glad, like genuinely, this is really heartwarming that you guys really enjoy this series. So uh, I am going to be continuing it for uh, a long period of time, I'm sure. And, uh, and yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.